Hey everyone, welcome to another NLP Journal Club. Today we are taking a look at Lima, Less is More for Alignment by authors from Meta AI. This paper is about large language models. Large language models are typically trained in two stages. The first stage is unsupervised pre-training, which utilizes large-scale databases of texts in different domains from the whole of the internet to give a good general purpose representations the second stage involves instruction fine-tuning and reinforcement learning, which is aimed at better aligning these models to user preferences. In particular, this second step, which is commonly referred to uh, RLHF, reinforcement learning from human feedback, instruction fine-tuning, and, and etc., has been very popular lately and has been attributed to the success of LLMs for use cases such as chatbots like ChatGPT. However, is it really the case that the RLHF is what's making the big difference with ChatGPT and similar systems? Or can it be attributed to the pre-training itself? And this is precisely the goal of the current paper. They're kind of questioning this assumption by everyone in the community at the moment that basically RLHF is essential step and that it, without it, it's impossible to come up with a good LLM, which is aligned to human preferences. What the authors do in this paper in a nutshell is they take a strong pre-trained LAMA checkpoint, where LAMA is a large language model released by Facebook a few months ago, which is a kind of like an open source, semi-open source LLM. And here they're using a 65 billion LAMA checkpoint. They prepare a collection of 1,000 examples of prompts along with responses. And then they fine tune this LAMA checkpoint on those 1,000 examples without using any reinforcement learning or human preference modeling. They just continue training the model on these examples. And what they show in this paper is that actually the LAMA checkpoint is pretty competitive with state-of-the-art instruction fine-tuned models like DaVinci, 3, Vicuna, and even GPT-4, being able to match them in terms of human evaluation. So more precisely, the result is that the responses produced by Lima are either equivalent or strictly preferred to GPT-4 in 43% of the cases. So still GPT-4 is better in overall. And Lima is preferred as high as 58% when compared to BART and 65% versus DaVinci Three, both of which are trained on human feedback. So this is a very interesting paper and together the results seem to suggest that this assumption that RLHF is strongly necessary might not be as correct as we have thought. In particular, maybe it's not necessary that we need to provide that many examples. You don't need to provide thousands and thousands of human feedback examples to the model to achieve strong performance on various benchmarks. So that's one of the findings. But second is that you don't really need to use special fine tuning techniques like RLHF potentially to get this high performance and this high quality of the LLMs. So those are the key findings of the paper. And now we can go into slightly a few more details. So first of all, about this data set that they prepare. The authors curate 1,000 examples that approximate real user prompts and high quality responses. They select 750 top questions and answers from community forums, and they manually write 250 examples of prompts and responses. So really this paper is focusing more on the topic of AI assistance, not necessarily on the topic of using the LLMs for downstream applications. The question is, is this model really effective also for these downstream tasks, which really what we're interested in doing for many, many use cases at the end of the day. And we don't really know whether the RLHF would have a bigger impact in that case or not. But yeah, so they have prepared 1000 demonstrations for this AI assistant type of scenario. And they train the LAMA checkpoint 65 billion on the 1000 example alignment training set, inserting a special 
user and assistant tokens to make sure that the model is able to distinguish between the two. They use pretty standard hyperparameters and setup for fine tuning. So very, very simple setup here. They take this Lima checkpoint and then they do a human evaluation against a bunch of models. And most notably here, we have the Alpaca 65 billion, Da Vinci 0 0.003, so this is GPT-3 model. We have BART, Claude, and GPT-4 from April. And there's kind of two main plots here within the evaluation comparison across those models, which show that in human preference evaluation setting, when Lima is compared to five different baselines across 300 test prompts, basically what you can see is that Lima wins over Alpaca, as you can see here, 53% of the cases, 21% is tie and 26% is a loss. Even though Alpaca is a model fine-tuned on 50,000 instructions, as far as I remember. So it has been fine-tuned with RLHF on 50,000 examples from of human feedback. The only models that outperform Lima seem to be Claude and GPT-4 in terms of human preferences. Another evaluation that they provide in this paper is preference evaluation using GPT-4 as the annotator. So basically the same situation, but instead of using humans, they ask GPT-4 with a prompt to pick which model output is better. And as you can see again here, the Lima outperforms Alpaca and Da Vinci and Bart, and again loses against Claude and GPT-4. And one thing to note is, of course, that GPT-4, for instance, has been trained really on a lot of human feedback, most likely from, from all the chat GPT data that they have collected. And it's tough to compare fairly GPT-4 against Lima. Um, of course, GPT-4 is a much larger model, most likely. It has been trained on much, much more instruction fine-tuned data. So Alpaca could be seen as a pretty fair baseline over here because it's an open source model as well. And it has been instruction fine-tuned with 50K examples. So in overall, very interesting paper by Meta, which makes some interesting findings, raises the question of whether this fancy RLHF fine-tuning really is needed or not. So that's it. That, that's all that I wanted to talk about today. Hope you'll find it useful. Uh, please comment, like, and subscribe. And I will talk to you in the next one.